Hey, it's Sebastian from the Metal Gods Meltdown, and this evening I am joined by Nate Paul, Rebel Priest. Hey, man, it's great to be chatting this evening. Can you first up introduce me to Rebel Priest and who you are and where you're from? Well, you can't tell by how I talk, but uh, we're a Vancouver Canadian band. I've lived here in Canada for about 20 years now. Uh, we're based in Van and we're a three piece rock and roll band and uh, pretty, pretty uh, straightforward rock and roll. Mm. Tracks, no, uh, no help. Just um, what comes out and make sure we practice and get it right before we record and don't rely on production tricks. Proper old school rock, yeah. So obviously yeah. you're from Australia. Whereabouts in Australia? Well, I'm actually from New Zealand, mate. So, uh, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the Irish guys get us wrong every time. Okay, so you're from New Zealand. Whereabouts in New Zealand? Yeah, I'm from Napier, uh, North Island, East Coast. Yeah. Oh, I lived here in Canada so long, my accent's a little warped. Yeah, I've got the same difference, mate. I'm from down south originally. I'm from a place in Devon, which is like oh. right down the bottom. And I now live in the northeast with the Geordies, YI oh. and all that. So, yeah, my accent's all over. Okay, then. So, why the name? Okay. Why the name? Rebel Priest. Well, like any other band, we chose it out of a thousand names. We There's three of us, we all had names, and we just agreed that this one was right, and uh, it stuck. Excellent. So what yeah. can we expect from your EP, Lessons in Love? Well, it's it's a driving, rocking little EP, and uh, some good some good rock and roll, really, some... Uh, some old school rock and roll. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to it quite a lot, actually, because um, I got into metal in the 80s when bands like Skid Row were emerging, Wasp and all that sort of stuff, and it like, dragged me back to that time. It's fucking brilliant. I love it. Oh, um, yeah. I love I the video. I, I grew up dreaming I was um, Stephen Adler. <laughs> Excellent, man. Cool. I mean, the video is, as well as classic-inspired 80s, rock did it worry you a bit with the pc woke crowd that you're going to be putting that sort of video out uh well it doesn't worry me because i'm old so am i <laughs> so that's their problem absolutely and, uh, uh, i feel like as long as you're not trying to hurt someone purposely or anything then how can you be doing something wrong in art if you're not purposely trying to do something to hurt someone else's feelings. Totally true, man. Okay. So if you could give me a track to introduce me to your band, which one would you choose? Mm. I've got a, quite a few. Do I have to choose off the new album or what? Well, just choose any. Uh, I like I like Snake Eyes. I think it's uh it's off our um our full length uh, LP and uh just a really good rocking song. I love playing it. I see when we're playing it in the crowd, singing by the end of the first chorus, and they're jumping around like mad people and having fun. And it's, yeah. I mean, I'm a huge old school metalhead, and mm -hmm. and I was got into like death metal and stuff quite a while. I was in like a DSI cover band, and oh wow, I was like, I was into it. But then I like started working out who's coming to our shows and yeah. And a mixture of people, not just hardcore um, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Excellent. I know you recently finished the tour as well in Canada. What are your plans for the rest of the year? Um, are you hoping to hit down to the States? I mean, even get over to Europe, maybe? Europe would be amazing. That's where I want to go. States is, would be, yeah, you think it'd be easy for us to go down there, but it's going to cost the band five grand just for um, just for the the visa to go down there. Yeah. And then you got to put your cost of the whole tour on top of that. So it's quite an expensive right. thing, and they they just don't make it easy at all for Canadian bands to travel to the right. state. Pretty much impossible. Right. You, like we could just go down there and find some gigs and do it, but as soon as if we get caught, we're banned from the country for like two years or something. So. 
it's, yeah. it's, 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 so we're I sticking, know what you mean. Yeah, sticking to Canada. I mean, you're in England and I'm from New Zealand. They're relatively sort of small places, and like basically, yeah. When you're driving, we drove 13 hours to get to one town. It was just like yeah, I can imagine. I know, like Canada's vast, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. insanely huge. I think. We, you could, I think you can fit in the UK probably like six times in the Canada or something like that, you know. I think it probably fit in like three times in British Columbia alone. Yeah, man. Totally. Absolutely insane. Okay, then. So what's the most memorable show you've done then so far on the tour that you just done? On the tour we just did, it was... Uh, I really liked Calgary. It was, it was awesome. It was... Uh, yeah. Just a good rocking show down in a basement of some bar at some really nice stage. But all the all the shows were really good. Like we didn't have any we didn't have any bad times on this tour. We just seemed to flow really good with the other band were a turmoil for cool guys from Toronto and uh they're called Dead Wolf and uh we had our buddy Rory from another band called the Barbarians. He was our driver for this tour, yeah. so we were we was me and Benny were just sitting in the back drinking and smoking our pot. It's got to be done, man. Got to be done. That's awesome. why I've started this interview a bit early because I've been having too many of these. <laughs> so, okay, then. So, what would you say is the worst thing about touring? I guess the 13 hour drives, things like that are just insane. We couldn't get a hotel. We were going to go to a motel one night and they took one look at us and said no. It was like 2 a.m. Really? So we're like fuck what are we going to do we just had to drive <laughs> into the wilderness like but you can't do that in canada there's so much w wildlife running across the roads and stuff they advise not to drive on the roads at night really? into yeah. the parks because there's like there's there's moose running across the road and <laughs> they're not small they're bigger than our car yeah you know? <laughs> but we had to sleep on the side of the road and the, some truck stopped just just the car and i was just sitting in the back so i decided to take a like a sleep pill but then that just made my legs jimmy and i was like oh fuck this sucks and then the next day we get there and had to play full show it's like holy shit we made it <laughs> and we found like oh, they let us stay and right across the road there was a strip club so we went in there it was sounds like a plan man happy days happy days <laughs> it was okay. with it. i'm like this in my bed <laughs> I'm tall. Can't fit. I'm six feet. You can't fit me in a Japanese car for long at the back. Uh, <laughs> All right, man. So if you could do a collaboration with any band or musician, who would it be and why? Oh, jeez. Well, I guess I would bring up the old school Metall Metallica. Brilliant. No. Metallica will be awesome, but I guess ACDC or Metallica, I'm taking two. I'm taking them both. Brilliant, man. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Okay, so then, so the choice between a long music career or a short-lived career with fame and fortune, which one yeah. would you choose? Well, I've chosen the long one. <laughs> I no choice. I've chosen the long one, and I've been drumming for, like, you know, 40 years now, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. I grew up in family bands and mm. it's just sort of, I don't reckon you can even try and choose to have a short career. You're like, where does the practice, the practice comes from years. You only get good from practicing for years. Yeah, totally. You can have a short career if you're a, um, a pretty pop singer. Cause mm. they just, well, you, what you look like right now, yeah. Yeah. but will they be doing it in, 30 years Probably not, mate. No. and enjoying it still absolutely okay yeah. then so going back to the uh, ep that you're going to be releasing if you could choose one song from that ep which one would you choose and what sort of tv film series would, it, would you have it on mm. let's see uh maybe dive bomber i think okay. that's a an intense song and uh it would be good for for any any war movie, any car chase movie, anything you want to be storming the gates of something. 
It's cool. like really great. It's brilliant. My Belgian friend insists I always put this question in. So if you were a musical instrument, what would you be? Musical instrument? Oh, it's got to be saxophone. Sexy Excellent. sax. Excellent. Okay, man. Okay, next one. Contentious question. Can you define what a woman is? Oh, you'll have to ask them. Sweet. Okay, next one. If you were stuck in a quarantine for a week, which band or musician would you have with you? Oh, it's got to be Weird Al. Then you get a huge variety. I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> you want someone like someone moody over there in the corner who refuses to smile in photos because they're tough metalheads. Real. All right, man. Okay, so the next thing is quick fire round. Five questions, yeah? So the first one, final or digital? Uh, digital. Yeah. Small intimate gig or festival? Small gig. Excellent. Denim or leather? Uh, I'm a denim guy. Yeah. Moose or bear? Oh, God, that's a tough one. Uh, a moose, maybe. You don't want to meet, don't want to meet either. No, I can imagine, man. All right. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time. Your EP is absolutely brilliant. Do you have any final words for your fans, our viewers, and listeners? Well, thanks a lot for uh, checking us out. C continue to watch and continue to support sites like this and uh, great hosts like like okay. Seb here. <laughs> Cheers, man. Have some summer beers and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on the road. <laughs>